Hello, everyone. My name is Vachit, and I'm a program manager for Microsoft Teams Developer Community Responses. And I'm back with another scenario based samples, which I'm going to demo and also do a code walkthrough. So, to get started, we'll talk about this scenario, uh, which is detecting the user presence and sending a notification using bot. We'll also do this uh, demo locally. We'll run this and have a demo. After that, we'll do a code walkthrough and take questions around that. So let's drive into it. So when you talk about the change notification for graph, uh, it's, it's a way of providing a webhook mechanism to deliver the changes happening um, and provide that information back to client. And the way it happens is uh, as a client application, you subscribe to a particular notification and you provide a webhook URL where you want to receive the notification. In current sample, the bot actually subscribes to the present change notification for the current user. And whenever the status gets changed for the current user, it just sends a proactive message. Uh, this particular sample is present at aka.ms slash team sample, and which is under graph hyphen uh, change notification folder. Uh, to talk about running this sample locally, uh, we'll be cloning this repo. Uh, I'm, I have already opened this solution. Uh, next part, we'll be actually creating a Azure bot and capturing the required uh, app ID, app secret, and the connection string. And we'll use an ngrok to run that locally. And we'll, we'll sideload and try this app. So I'm just uh, switching to my Visual Studio. So I have change notification sample open. Uh, I have app setting dot JSON wherein we have these four parameters which values needs to be put in, and we'll be updating the manifest file to get started. So let's start with the Microsoft app ID and app password. To get this information, you go to Azure portal, start with create a new resource and search for uh, Azure bot. Once you search for Azure bot uh, in the marketplace, you'll, you'll find an entry for a, a bot creation process. So let this load and you see a Azure bot here. And I click on create. Providing a name for what? Change not demo and I'm actually going to try this in a, a different tenant. So I'm just providing a multi-tenant app. So we'll just review this and um, we will let this create the create the app. The validation is passed. I think we have the app bot handle available. And it's now what it's doing is it's creating a Microsoft app ID and it's also creating a Azure bot and associating with that uh, Microsoft app. Um, okay, this will just take a um, couple more seconds. Once we have that, uh, we will go ahead and make the required changes for enabling this bot to support in a, in a Microsoft Teams. So let's go to the resource. Uh, to, to start with, let's go to channels, and this is where we are enabling uh, Microsoft Teams as a channel. So this bot uh, can be used inside uh, Microsoft Teams. So, so we have done this setting for the channel now. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and visit the configuration page. Uh, we, we'll keep a copy of Microsoft App ID. I'll go ahead and uh, copy it back in, in the solution. Okay, so now we have App ID. Let's go ahead and fetch the, uh, the second parameter of what we are looking for. Uh, let's go to manage. And under certificates and secret section, let's just create a new client secret. Let's add. And let's copy this value back to the. So now we have Microsoft App ID and password. The next thing we need is a uh, is a connection name and the base URL. Uh, for the base URL, what I'm doing is I'm just running the ngrok. 
on port number 3978. So this is just to connect my local development setup uh, and have a HTTP endpoint which I can use in my bot code. So just copy the contourso.ngrog.io. I just pasted it here and let's go back and try and get the connection name information for this. Okay. For uh, connection name information, first thing you need to do is you need to add a redirect URL. So I'm just adding a web application uh, and we are putting a redirect URL for the bot framework. Uh, and this is used to actually get a access token from the graph API and using that access token we will be actually configuring and, and subscribing to the change notification. So we are done with this part. We have added a redirect URL. Let's go back to bot and let's add a uh, OAuth connection setting. So when we are adding OAuth connection setting, let's call it as auth and we are using Azure AD um, V2 as a service provider. Let's copy the client ID, same as a Microsoft app ID and the app secret, what we have already copied back in our code. So let's go and grab that information. And let's put in the client secret. So the tenant ID here, if you want to uh, restrict your app to be a specific tenant, you can specify the tenant ID. If you want to keep it available for other tenants, uh, you can uh, call it as common. And in terms of scope, uh, we are using presence uh, we are requesting presence permission, so I'm just copy pasting the uh, scope required for this sample. OK, once we fill in all this information, just save the connection string and let's just go back and update our sample uh, with this connection string. So that is. So now we have all the required information for this sample. Uh, next thing what we need to do is update the manifest file. I'll just run the sample so that it, it loads up, it builds and loads up. Meanwhile, I'll go ahead and update the manifest. Uh, you just need to update two values. You need to update the manifest app ID and the bot ID part for this. So as you could see, this is running on 3978. Let me minimize this and go ahead and update the manifest. So I just copied the bot ID we have same bot ID I'm using for app as well. And let's go ahead and create a new manifest. Uh, manifest, let's just zip the manifest we have here. Just compress it to zip. And we have our, our manifest file ready. So I'll just copy the path uh, and we'll be heading over to our demo tenant. I'm just, uh, Switch to the demo tenant here. Uh, I've logged in using um, Megan's account here, and what I'm doing is I'm uploading the custom app to my personal personal app section. So let's go ahead and add. So once the adding is done, we'll we'll start seeing the updates here. Okay, let me just confirm if we have modified the endpoint. Okay, so. I think we missed to modify the endpoint URL, so I'll just copy paste this value. Otherwise, we'll, our bot will not be able to listen anything. OK, let's go ahead and save this. OK. Back and try this one more time. OK, let's type in help. OK. Now you could see we started receiving uh, API post messages to ngrok and it's uh, the first step is to uh, do the login part. Uh, we will start seeing the uh, the login part as soon as this code runs. And uh, once the login is completed, the entire uh, subscription part will start. So let me click on sign in. OK, accepting the permissions.
And once the sign is completed, we'll be able to get a message which says what's the current state uh, for this particular user. So right now it's a PZ, so we should uh, see a, a message saying uh, that's a PZ status. And the way you could just test this is you go ahead and change the status to let's say do not disturb. And once you get the uh, once you get the notification, once you get the message endpoint. A uh, bot will send you a notification saying your status is uh, do not disturb. I think I just got the previous message as well. So, so this is how this works. So we have this uh, whole setup ready locally. Before moving on to the code walkthrough, I just want to talk about one scenario what uh, we have built ourselves and which we use internally is to track the questions. So whenever there's a new post made on a GitHub for an issue, uh, we have a bot which has a subscription to read for channel messages. And once the new message posts in a channel, we get a notification and we actually track it and uh, send a proactive message in the channel saying, hey, this is the tracking ID for this uh, GitHub question. And then uh, there's a assigned to person. So we have built this end to end using the exact same scenario. Moving on to the uh, code walkthrough. Component wise, you're using bot SDK, v4, uh, graph API components, and also using a background service to monitor and renew the subscription. Note that the subscriptions are time bound. For the presence, it's valid only for one hour. After one hour, it gets expired, so you need to renew those subscription. And flow wise, we have seen the login experience. Then we, uh, as a code wise, we capture the conversation reference. Uh, we subscribe for the change notification and uh, the actual notifications are handled at API slash notifications endpoint. So let's get into the specifics. This is the first one where what we are doing is whenever we get a first message, we are just storing the conversation reference and this is happening in memory uh, just for a demo purpose. We're just storing it there. Um, next part is the actual subscription part. So we are creating subscription for the communication slash presence slash user ID. So this is actually listening for current users presence and the change type is updated. Point to note here is we actually specify the ngrok endpoint where the changes would be notified and we request for uh, this subscription. And the last bit. Uh, which talks about the handling for this process. So once status is changed, there would be post request made uh, with the with the body, uh, which contains the information for the current user. So you you read that information and uh, go through the conversation references what you have saved, and you actually send a notification which says uh, this is the current status, and you can again change the status to get notified. So just to summarize, um, we had a demo covering end-to-end -end scenario for status update. Uh, we saw how to run the sample locally. Key points covered were the capturing conversation, subscribing to change notification, and handling the actual notification and sending the proactive message. Provided few resources, the send proactive message documentation uh, and also the documentation graph side which talks about the notification changes uh, in user data. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on ak.ms slash teams platform feedback feedback page. For it's any other contact. questions, we'll take it over chat. Uh, back to you, Brian. Thank you so much, Wajin. Excellent uh, information. Love the demo and getting to see this in action. Thank you.